Smile. There you go. I didn't expect the flash to go off, now I'm blind. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> uh, unexpected talk. This, I just threw this stuff together. Um, I was confronted today by a couple people, or not today, this yesterday, uh, about an issue between live kernel patching and BPF. And they want them to play along. I guess some people care about that. So, um, I wrote up a problem statement. <laughs> Uh, basically, my presentation is, I'll just read this, live kernel patching uses ftrace to hijack the function call to call an updated function. Um, in doing so, it sets this IP modify flag in the ops, and when it registers it, because um, it modifies the ftrace tra trampoline so that when it, the ftrace tramp trampoline will return, it's not going to return to who called it, it's going to return to another function. And obviously, you can only have one um, caller or, or one, basically, um, a callback in ftrace that could do that. It won't make sense if you have two callers that's a, that want to go someplace else, because you only have one place that you can return to. Uh, BPF has um, uses something called direct calls, which also kind of uses the IP modify, because it's not going to return to the caller. It's going to return someplace else. Um, so the way that BPF trampoline works, if it's a single register, so you have like some kernel function that you're going to tap to. And then you switch it to the trampoline. It says, and what ftrace will say is like, oh, there's only one uh, user attached to this function. It has a counting of all the functions, like all the functions that can be traced in the available filter functions. Has, is, has a counting table, and it keeps track of how many functions are hooked. If it's only one, there's a trick that does the optimization to call the trampoline directly. The direct call is actually one of the fastest. It just says, OK, um, BPF registered some sort of trampoline. It just says, you know, OK, the no op is going to just call that trampoline, and then uh, that trampoline does whatever BPF does. Um, if you add a, another ftrace callback to that same function, uh, that uh, <clears throat> it won't call the direct, the direct call dr directly, it actually will change it to call the ftrace caller trampoline, which is an ftrace generic uh, a trampoline, that then will you know, save the registers, um, it records the like some registers, like a structure, and then it will call this loop iterator. It's not really called loop iterator. I just I wasn't really going to look at the source code and figure out what the real name is, so I just said loop iterator. And that does basically a for each of all the registered uh, ftrace ops that have been registered to ftrace, and goes and calls the functions. One of them is a help a direct func helper that says, "Hey, we have a direct function attached to this uh, uh, function, so instead of just we got to let the trampoline, the ftrace caller trampoline, know that there's a direct caller attached to it. So when you have like another something attached to a direct, it'll call all the like function tracing or whatever. Comes back to the ftrace caller. The ftrace caller checks some sort of architecture dependent way of like right for x86 we use the orig a i a x, um, and we set we put in who we really want to call the return. So if anything is in the orig a x on the return, it will then jump directly to that. So uh, when the direct uh, trampoline from BPF gets called, uh, does whatever it does, and doesn't even know it's going to look just like it was called directly from the function. Now, how is live kernel patching does? Same thing. We start off with the no-op, and we're going to call the ftrace caller. So the ftrace caller now goes to the same thing. It calls the live kernel patch function that will change the um, stack pointer um, Actually, so put, it wasn't change stack pointer, but update the stack pointer so that when the ftrace caller returns, it's not going to return back to kernel func. It's going to return back to the new patched kernel func too. And that's how um, live kernel patching works. Now, you can see an issue now of how we're going to get the two to play along. So one idea is it's end up with something like this. So your live kernel patching, I know it's not the fastest because it has to go through a trampoline, but the trampoline really isn't that slow. It, it's not doing anything um, with the new ftrace args. It only saves uh, the args like the, uh, with six registers for the arguments and then calls live kernel patching function. It updates and comes back. It's actually rather fast. And what we could do is have a way that our ftrace could actually detect that when you try to do a direct call and if ftrace had a mechanism to talk to live kernel patching or live kernel patching would just say, hey, we're modifying it or say we have an IP modify or have some sort of mechanism to say that this is a live kernel patch and we're going and we could tell ftrace, by the way, this func kernel func is no longer kernel func. 
it's Colonel Funk 2, and here's the address of the caller trumper. So, so if someone says, hey, I need to put a direct trampoline on, then I could do um, update Colonel Funk 2. We could actually, uh, yeah, update Colonel Funk 2, and that when um, <clears throat> the, the live kernel patching jumps to Colonel Funk 2, you got your direct caller and everything works and you, you know, no problem. The two could work together. Let's say if BPF is first, so what BPF would have to do first, uh, if the live kernel patching were to come in, we say, hey, we have a direct caller on here. Uh, <clears throat> this is why the live kernel patching would have to tell Ftrace that, hey, I'm going, this is live kernel patching, here's a new function I'm going to be doing, and here's the address if there's a direct caller to now update the direct caller. So when you register it, um, <clears throat> so when the live kernel patching registers on something as a direct caller, it will be able to update the function that it's going to update first, and then when it does the switch, you get the direct caller calling the new function, everything works great. There is one problem. It's this does whatever BPF does. Because uh, the issue is, BPF also has a, does things differently than K probes, K rep probes, and function graph tracer on how to recur or the return call. What it does is actually puts the call to the original function into um, <clears throat> the trampoline so that it could trace before and after the caller. So if we were to do this and add the Trump, uh, the um, live kernel patching would say, hey, switch, what would happen would be the, the direct trampoline would be calling the old function and not the new function. This would be a bug. So now we need to have some sort of, now this is where we need the BPF to be involved, to, that live kernel patching comes in, or if we do something, we're going to have to say, hey, this is probably more of an issue if the uh, BPF was first. If live kernel patchy was first, you'll probably get the kernel funk too anyway. That's probably, Ftrace could hide that from you. But if BPF is first. We have to have a way of when we apply live kernel patching to tell BPF, hey, change it to this. So, and this would then still work. So that's my proposal on how to solve this issue. Um, so let's have the, uh, let the games begin. I mean, BPF, if, if there's a live patch going on, BPF could, the, the BPF trampoline could be updated to the, the kernel func too, right? We could make a call when this happens, uh, like remove the old trampoline, right? Go there and then create a new trampoline over there. There'll be a window of time where that... Oh, so you basically mean that we could have two direct... Oh, so instead of having that direct tramp... I'll use this here, whoops. Instead of having this guy, we create... Or I mean, we create actually... Uh, both of them. So you have two of those, and then all you do is, when we do the switch, we make the direct call call the second one. Or have the update function. So basically, okay, so let, actually, let me go back. What would actually be happening would be um, the kernel function would be calling the direct trampoline. And so what we have to do is when live kernel patching wants to say, okay, we're ready to update, it's going to actually have to update the, either we create another direct trampoline or we update the call of the direct trampoline to do it. I mean, I guess we could create another one and then just have it so the new function point doesn't point to the direct, it points to the new one, so when they switch, it jumps to the new direct one. Yeah, I mean, like okay, yeah, actually that would work. Yeah. So first you jump from like this, this old kernel func to the live right. patch logic, to the Oops. new live patch function, right? The live patch function right. also has a knob. In that knob, you do the ftrace thing, right? The FTA yeah. string then, then comes back to the k k kernel func2. We execute the BPF trampoline logic. Yes, okay, so, so let me see. So ideally, we would start off, and let me try to flip things here. Uh, ch -ch -ch, go back. We'd be at here, this is, we would start off here. And what we would do is when we want to live kernel patching, we'll say, hey, this means that Ftrace and live kernel patching will have to go talk to BPF as well. So when you have a direct caller done like this, now we're going to do live kernel patching on kernel func. We have to tell um, the, uh, we're going to have to tell BPF we're going to be updating the live kernel patch, so it will create the it will create a separate direct tramp that points to the new function, and then when we do the switch, um, the new function is going to point to that second trap. So when Ftrace does the switch, everything is just smoothly goes. That's actually a good answer for that. Uh, can you uh, the previous one? Uh, wait, the one all the way. This one, or? Uh, no, no, the, yeah, the direct trampoline. This one? Yeah, yeah, so when it calls the old function, it actually can call the stored uh, return uh, address, right? 
Uh, wait, wait, what was that? Uh, repeat so when the kernel func2 is calling the direct trump line, yeah. the, the trump line can co uh, actually get the written address from the call instruction, which is on the stack, yeah. and just call that, right? Well. And it would call the kernel func2. Is that what it does? Oh, no, I mean, does it moment. call? No, I thought it, does it, does it call from the stack? Do you get the address from the stack and call that? No, no, you no. Technically, it uh, can, but we don't do it to yeah, avoid indirect calls. Yeah, I did it in my call. patches that were never pushed, like uh, for this trampoline rewrite, because I had trampoline which was called from many other functions. So I used this solution. I read the return address uh -huh. from the stack and. So that won't that won't get affected by this. And it's very easy to change. It was just yes, but few lines. only for this multi-attached trampoline, yeah. right? But it's generic, right? I mean, it's at the moment we put the address like hardcode it, but we can read it from the stack. But you're going to lose five cycles, so but we don't want slower. that. <laughs> that's that's the point. It's slower. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> like indirect call versus direct call, there is this noticeable difference. Oh, right. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. There is a there is a difference between direct call, especially when you have all the you know repolines and all that in there too, and you have to handle oh, okay. that. Um, okay, so I think that we have the solution then. So basically, the difference would be. Before we do the switch, we would actually have this will be a set. Well, we'd have both of them. We'd have actually this and this. So when we do this, this will be attached to this guy. But the direct tramp, once we uh, inject the um, call to ftrace caller and um, the function live kernel patch will switch, it will switch back to, um, yeah. So once it jumps to the new thing, it jumps to the new direct caller. Um, I think I think actually what you were saying proposing <laughs> earlier probably better instead of like allocating and generating new uh, trampoline just rewrite the address um, in here. Actually, the reason why I don't want to do that because I think that's going to cause race conditions because this update it actually will jump here and it will actually hold off jumping to here for a little bit. So if if we change this has to be changed. Like there will be race the, conditions well, regardless. Like well, yeah. KLP is not atomic. It's like. KLP changes like 10 different functions, like in the all execute in parallel. Like KLP has this multi state stuff and it's patching, 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 well, and then eventually converges. So, like, just because it's like calls kernel func, the kernel func 2 for well, some Well, no, time, reason why, no, reason why is because once we have the switch over, once this guy says switch from this guy to this guy, this guy's already calling the correct one. And this one will always be calling this, and of course this guy will be calling the old yeah, one but, until but, we do the switch. But this is, will be happening like regardless on different CPUs. It's potentially possible. One is one CPU is using func two, another func. It's um, normal. Like LP is. No, we don't. With the switch does over. Does this? No, there, there, no. Once we switch it, it's 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 uh, atomic across CPUs because it's. No, it's not. Like wait, wait. the CPU can start executing any of these functions, and it's already there. Right, so like just because text rewrite, like text, uh, text POC, whatever, BP, is atomic, the CPU might be already like executing different stuff. They already entered right, right, the yeah, function. Right, yeah, yeah, I mean, like for across the CPUs, it could, because oh, you're, you're on the direct function I mean, I mean, this. like imagine this func or func2, they're just long functions. Like regardless how text atomically is modified, different CPUs will be executing them. So there, there's no point, my point, there's no reason to avoid races when the races there's got to be there and KLP deal with that already. So don't worry about like race condition. There's well, well, we'll see, like you said. But, uh, but that's, what, that's what textbook BP does. Like it's whole logic to modify text safely. Yeah, so, so the textbook, yeah, because it does, you know, it adds the product, syncs out all the CPUs, changes the things, checks, changes all the CPUs, and then, so it, it is actually kind of atomic, I mean, when it hits, because the, um, the textbook, uh, when you hit the, we put a breakpoint in, and once we put the breakpoint in, uh, it's basically is calling the new, new call. But you're right, it could be, it could be calling the old or the new until it syncs right there. Um, and that's the thing, is like, if it's already calling the old function, I have to see how live kernel patching does it because live kernel patching will, I think it switches it once it does the switch of the um, uh, regs. But then again, the question is. So you wouldn't miss like the, any kernel func or kernel func 2 execution, right? But it might be like inter, inter, intermixed. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. either. It's well, like. Well, we can like the first part and second part of the template, so like the whole function will hook up to the first part while we generate the second one, right? Like 
Well, I'm saying don't generate the second one. Well, just just no, write actually, an old one. Well, here's the, here's the problem I have. Easy. It'll oh, you mean when we add in our own like if entry stuff, like second if entry yeah. program? Yeah, so it's basically yes, like but adding new VPR program, just like we update also like the system. And, and yes. actually, right? So it's just like updating the trampoline. Yeah. It is like literally updating the trampoline. And here's the thing too, the racing conditions I'm worried about is more of a live curl patching has a lot of its own race conditions that I don't understand. And it determines. So even once we do this connect here, this live kernel patching function doesn't actually set the regs pointer until it's ready to do so. Then basically it does, I believe. It, so it's this little trampoline function. It may not do anything, and it'll just return back to the original direct call. So if it calls this guy, we want to call the original one to come back to this thing. And once it says, OK, come to call the new guy, we want this guy to call the new guy. So it does make sense to have two trampolines, depending on who calls it. This guy, this guy will always call the direct trampoline, this guy will always call the second one. What's the concern, Alex, if we do this, right? Like, <laughs> this, this is the new allocation. But I think if he does avoid the complexity of that, the worst of Especially well, at the very least, we have an assumption that one being is one trampoline. Like, how are we afraid this? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think the only real race condition is if between when Live Patch thinks it's flipped and it checks every task stack to make sure that nobody's using that function, that nobody actually ever will. So if there's like a period where you could have a BPF trampoline that ends up calling the original function after every task stack has been checked, that would be a race. But otherwise, you can have tasks executing both for yeah. a long time. Yeah, it could be. So, although BP, I mean, tra live kernel patching does a bunch of things where it checks all the file, uh, all applications that know where it's called. It actually does the stack trace. That's where the Orcon wonder came from because uh, live kernel patching needed a uh, accurate uh, stack trace. Does the signature of the kernel func two change? Can it potentially change from like kernel uh, func? Like, can it get like extra argument or one less argument? Or stuff um, like that? I don't think you can because you have callers. Okay. Uh, and then, like, what, what would be the mechanism for notifying BPF about like n the need to update the existing trampoline? Um, that's like so. Like, th there will be just a function you will pass us, like a uh, original function, a new yeah, function. Yeah, I think it'll like probably that. pass you a new function. Can we look up the trampoline from so, like, the function? In fact, Ftrace could probably even help you with that too, because uh, that's exactly what um, live kernel patching needs to tell Ftrace, because Ftrace has to know um, where to. Because ideally, is when live kernel patching happens, Ftrace has to know that anyone that when we have live kernel patching active, uh, and anyone wants a hook to this guy, Ftrace is going to return this guy. So live kernel patching is going to have to tell us, um, yeah, where is that? That guy. It's, live kernel patching must tell us this guy, so it could tell BPF as well, saying here's the new function, the address. So you could actually set everything up with. As long as we don't don't miss like any execution of either kernel func or kernel func two. Right, and that's why. So basically, it's, you it's better to update in place, and we also need to update the func uh, func right. IP that like will be returned from, so. Yeah, it's just like updating the trampoline, so. Should it work, right? <laughs> they will in details, right. right. So yeah, fine, let's, let's, not, let's not like get bogged on whether we just patch the existing trampoline or like get a new one, like both options potentially work. There are pluses and minuses to both, as far as I can see, but. <laughs> Basically, we need to get the live kernel patching folks involved. Obviously, because uh, they're going to have to. A lot of the work will be there. Uh, I could. It wouldn't be. It would be kind of trivial for on the FTRA side. It's just a little bit of accounting that it just has to do. But other than that. So Steven, since you're here, so like this FTRA scholar, so kernel patching once the function is patched, it always does. Yes. This. Yes. So it always does FTRA scholar doing the same yes. and then calling that function. Yes, because it can always switch to a new and function. And it does it. Function, and it does function. it in the loop, right? So there is a still. No. Loop and this no. What it does actually. Okay. Um, so I you, should, you, no, this is actually. So, so this F-trace caller is generate the trampoline by This is a generic, yes. This is, actually, this is actually a direct call, and this is a direct call. So oh, it's okay. a direct call, direct call, and that's. But this live patch func is only one, or it's specific? Like, there will be different function for every um, kernel function that KLP is patching? Or it has some sort of. I don't marks. know. I, I, can't, I don't actually know. They might do it per. That I don't know the implementation. Just, just curious. Wait, so, you, so there's a single function that everybody jumps directly to to see if they should be using the new function or the old function. But there's different, like that live patch func is different for every single function being patched. Does the direct call is patched for each 
like yeah, there's like there's just an indirect. So it's probably an if statement there, or maybe even a static. Oh, maybe there's a static branch too. Oh, so yeah, each for each task, you check to see if it should have used if it should be using the new patch funk or the old patch funk. Mm -hmm. That's in that static f trace caller thing there, and then you jump to the live patch funk if it should be or the old function if it shouldn't be. But you do that for each each function and obviously each task. Yeah, it's worth like it's worth looking at what what code is generated there in that trace caller, like something in something else. Anyway, that's all basically the that's my And then we do all this dance back when kill P gets unloaded. Yeah. And what? We do this dance back, like we'll revert all of this stuff. Yes. When it's kill P gets similar. unloaded, right? Because unload and load they're equally Yeah. Both the same operations. Yep. It'll be easier to actually get it off. Yep. But that's just the idea, so any other questions? Okay. Thank you.